Welcome back to another episode of Learn to Fly Here. On this episode, we're going to cover one of the most important maneuvers, slow flight. This maneuver will be shown from entry to exit, as well as pointers, and what could happen when an improper use of controls are used during the maneuver. And there are a lot of reasons why this maneuver is practiced, but there's also a very important time during the flight when the skills from this maneuver are needed. During slow flight, any further increase in angle of attack or load factor, or even a reduction in power, will result in a stall warning, which could include an aircraft buffet or a stall horn, and pilots should react and correct for any stall indication. This means during slow flight, the aircraft will be flown just above a stall, but the goal is to maneuver the aircraft without stalling the aircraft. To begin, slow flight is typically completed in the landing configuration and at an altitude no lower than 1500 feet above the ground in single engine airplanes. Regardless of minimum altitudes, a safe altitude allowing for a stall recovery should also be considered. And from the beginning of the slow flight maneuver to the end of it, small, gentle corrections need to be made. And that includes getting the airplane slowed down to fly at a slow speed. The throttle was slowly reduced to 1500 RPMs, and as the aircraft slowed down, flaps were increased one notch at a time. As speed decreases and stall speed approaches, the sounds heard by the pilot will change. The wind noise will decrease as the airplane slows down, but also the flight controls will start to lose some effectiveness and more control input will be required to get the same effect that would have been achieved at a normal cruising speed. In this example, the target slow flight speed is 40 knots. At that speed, we should not hear the stall warning horn. And if doing this in a real airplane, 40 knots may not be the proper speed. This is Microsoft Flight Simulator. It's not one to one in terms of realism. During slow flight, we're gonna use a concept you've probably heard of before. Pitch for airspeed, power for altitude. Our pitch or elevator control is going to control our airspeed and power is going to control our altitude. Here's an example of using pitch to control airspeed. The airplane is doing 40 knots indicated airspeed. If we push forward on the yoke, nose is gonna drop, the airplane is going to speed up to bring that speed back down, but pitching the nose up reduces the airspeed. Remember, this is a visual maneuver. Once the airplane is holding the target airspeed, look outside and see where the horizon is hitting the glare shield or some part on the airplane in reference to the nose of the aircraft. We can look up here and see where the horizon is hitting the glare shield as a reference. If everything remains constant and all instruments were covered up, if we held the horizon in that spot, the airplane would continue flying in slow flight, holding the airspeed and the altitude. Now to show an example of using power to control altitude. The aircraft is at 1900 feet, 2000 feet is the target altitude, 2100 RPM holds the airplane in level flight or pretty close to it. So in order to climb, Power needs to be added because excess thrust makes the airplane climb. The airplane is also flying near the edge of a stall. If we pulled back, that would increase the angle of attack, which would make the airplane possibly stall. We don't want to do that. We want to hold airspeed constant with pitch, add power to control altitude. For about the last minute, we've been holding 2,000 feet on an easterly heading. Now let's make the airplane climb as we just talked about. In order to make the airplane climb, we're not gonna use pitch. We're gonna use power. As the throttle is increased to full throttle, the airplane will start to climb. We have full flaps, so there's a lot of drag on the airplane right now. So the full power and this slow airspeed, which is also causing a lot of drag from induced drag, the airplane's only climbing at about 500 feet per minute. Where if the airplane were in the clean configuration with full power at normal climb speed, it would possibly be climbing around 1,000 feet per minute. And as the airplane slowly reaches 2,200 feet, we're gonna stop the climb. So in order to stop the climb, we would continue to adjust back pressure to hold 40 knots and power would be reduced to stop the climb. But as you can see, 2,200 feet was slightly overshot, that's okay. What we're gonna do to correct it is the opposite, reduce the power to something below 2100 because we know 2100 RPM will hold the airplane in level flight. So now the throttle's at 1900 RPMs and look at the vertical speed. It's going down about 200 feet per minute. While maneuvering during slow flight, the use of rudder will be increased greatly. 
especially the right rudder because all of the left turning tendencies are in full force when the airplane is at low air speeds and high power settings like we have right now. With that being said, rudders being used to keep the aircraft coordinated by keeping the ball centered and when turning, turns should be done with very shallow banks. As the airspeed slows down, the rate of turn is going to increase at a given bank angle. When flying at normal speeds, when the aircraft is banked left or right, back pressure is added to maintain altitude. But in this situation in slow flight, if we increase back pressure too much, the airplane is going to stall. So to hold altitude during slow flight, we're going to use power. Hence the saying, pitch for airspeed, power for altitude. For reasons of demonstration, Let's do another turn, but this time let's do a turn at 30 degrees and look at the difference. This slow airspeed and at 30 degrees of bank is going to give a really high rate of turn. And also notice to maintain altitude, full power is needed. This is one more reason when doing slow flight, do everything slowly. Make shallow turns, be gentle on the rudder, be gentle with the power. During slow flight, Things can happen a lot faster. You would think they would be slower, but that's not always the case. A few minutes ago, I mentioned left turning tendencies are greatly increased during slow flight. Another thing that's greatly increased during slow flight, adverse yaw. As aileron is turned one direction, the nose initially turns in the opposite direction. And that's happening because the downward deflected aileron has more drag than the upward deflected aileron on the other wing. One more thing that makes slow flight easy is use trim. Trim is your friend. It's very easy to hold the control inputs to the point that your hands start sweating. Don't do that. And believe it or not, one of the common errors listed in the airplane flying handbook is failure to properly trim the airplane. To exit slow flight, slowly add full power. As the aircraft starts to accelerate, it's going to want to pitch up. Counter that with forward pressure and trim and also reduce the flaps one notch at a time. Common errors when performing slow flight, a very big one, is failure to adequately clear the area. Always do clearing turns before starting any maneuver. Using too little or too much elevator pressure resulting in larger than needed air speed and altitude changes is another error. Insufficient right rudder to compensate for left yaw Fixating on the instruments, not trimming the airplane, which not trimming the airplane is going to increase workload dramatically for the pilot. And last of all, a very big item, failure to respond to a stall warning. Almost 20 years ago when I taught people how to fly, slow flight was performed with the stall buzzer going off the whole time. That is no longer the case. If you hear the stall buzzer, lower the nose and increase airspeed. And if not corrected, this could happen which is a stall. Installs will be covered, but not in this video. Pilots are required to do slow flight to learn differences in flying an aircraft at low speeds versus high speeds. The place an aircraft is flown the slowest is also when it's flown closest to the ground during takeoff, landing, and go-arounds. Learning and practicing slow flight also helps maintain airspeed control. Pitch for airspeed and power for altitude was used during the slow flight demonstration, but it's also used in the traffic pattern and during climbs and descents. Holding the proper approach speed is important when trying to achieve published numbers in an airplane flight manual for landing distances. On a check ride, the FAA requires altitude to stay within plus or minus 100 feet, heading within plus or minus 10 degrees, airspeed plus 10 minus zero knots, and bank angle within 10 degrees of a specified bank. If you would like more information on slow flight and stalls and why pitch for airspeed and power for altitude is used during slow flight, it's in that diagram in the text above it. It's a free publication made by the Federal Aviation Administration. And if you type in airplane flying handbook in the Google machine, you'll find it. And as always, thank you for watching and be sure to click the link in the description for a playlist to more videos like these.